All right, thanks for watching. And today I would like to solve some equations involving sine and cosine, just to get some practice with this algebra. So let's start with the first example. Try to solve sine squared of x equals to 3 quarters. Now, in general, if you had to solve y squared equals a, you would say that y is plus or minus square root of a. So in this case, if sine of x squared is 3 quarters, this means that sine of x is plus or minus square root of 3 quarters. And so sine of x is plus or minus square root of 3 over 2. And notice this is a special value of sine. And in general, for those problems, I would highly recommend drawing the trig circle because it helps you figure out what the values are. Perfect. Let me just recenter this. Great. Now, square root of 3 over 2, it's a value that's close to 1. So it's roughly here. And minus square root of 3 over 2, it's a value close to minus 1. And what we're asking ourselves is here, remember sine is the y-coordinate, so which points have height square root of 3 over 2? And which points have height minus square root of 3 over 2? So again, this is root 3 over 2. This is negative root 3 over 2. Well, if you look at this more carefully, notice there are four points. So in this case, there might be four solutions or more. This angle, this angle, this angle, and this angle. All right, let's figure out what the first angle is. Well, in those problems, at least I always have doubts whether to put 30 degrees or 60 degrees. Well, here you actually have, if you look at the picture, it's actually an angle very close to 90 degrees, which means that between 30 and 60, it has to be 60 degrees. Or again, in radians, this is pi over 3 radians, which already gives us one solution, x equals pi over 3. Now, for the second angle, what it looks like, it's 90 degrees plus a little angle, which probably points at 120 degrees. And in fact, notice this is roughly two thirds of this circle. And mathematically, what this becomes is two pi over three radians. So pi over three, two pi over three. And then look also at this angle. So uh, this is like 60, but we're going negative. So it's negative 60 degrees or negative pi over three radians. And lastly, uh, same thing here. Notice you're kind of going the same way to this angle that you go to this angle. So this is probably negative 2 pi over 3 radians. Now, um, on this circle, there seem to be four solutions. But remember, for sine and cosine, you can always add multiples of 2 pi and still get the same answer. So in fact, what our actual solution is, it's pi over 3 plus multiples of pi. So I like to write 2 pi m because that's my name. But in general, I'll just write 2 pi n. So multiples of pi or same thing, 2 pi over 3 plus 2 pi n. And you see, you do the same thing with plus minus. So it becomes plus minus pi over 3 plus multiples of 2 pi and plus minus um, 2 pi over 3 uh, plus multiples of 2 pi. Where here n is an integer. All right, great. So again, for those problems, try to solve for sine or cosine, and I highly recommend using the trig circle. And in fact, let's continue. How would the following one? Okay. Let's do four cosine of theta. So a little problem with cosine equals two cosine of theta minus uh, one. 
well, just solve for this. So four minus two, that becomes two cosine of theta and that equals minus one. And so cosine of theta equals minus one half. So in this case, again, you have to look at the unit circle. And in this case, you have to figure out, well, which points give you an X coordinate of minus one half? Because you see the um, cosine gives you the X coordinate. So minus one half. So it looks like there are two points. There's one here and one here. And let's figure out the angle. Well, notice what this is. It's kind of two thirds of the circle. And again, that's why I highly recommend just drawing the picture. So it has to be 120 degrees, which is two pi over three radians. And same thing here. It's the same thing in reverse. So it's minus two pi over three. So the solution in this case is theta is plus or minus two pi over three. But remember, we can always add multiples of two pi to get this answer. So this is the answer in this case. Um, and just a quick remark, if you have tangent, just be careful. It's not two pi n, but just pi n because of uh, this periodicity. Great. Now, what about equations not with theta or x? How about with two theta? Our third example, what about sine of two theta equals um, square root of two over two? So careful here, the double angle formula wouldn't really help. So don't apply that. Instead, think of it as follows. Call this X, a capital X, then all you have to solve is capital sine of capital X equals square root of two over two. So again, look at your trig circle. You see every solution to this problem has a trig circle. That's how important it is. So square root of two over two, it's one of those special values. So I believe pi over four. So again, which points have a uh, altitude of square root of two over two? Or there's this point and then this point, which this one I believe corresponds to pi over four. And this one is kind of, uh, I would say three quarters of this half circle. So three pi over four. So what does that give you? It gives you capital X equals pi over four, plus again, multiples of two pi. So two pi M's and three pi over four, plus multiples of two pi. But what was X? Remember X was two theta. So what we get is two theta equals pi over four plus two pi M and then three pi over four plus two pi M. I should change my name to pi N because <laughs> it would be cool or just change notation. So to solve for theta, all you have to do is divide by two in this equation. And then what you end up with is getting the following. Then theta becomes, so pi over four divided by two. So pi over eight, two pi n that cancels out and just becomes multiples of pi and three pi over eight plus pi n. And that's your solution. And that would also work if you had three theta, four theta, any value of theta, it's fine. All right, and then there are a couple of other equations that are quite fun to deal with. I like this one, so let's do that one first. Um, how about this example, so cosine of x, minus sine of x, cosine of x equals zero. Notice there's a common factor of cosine of x. So cosine of x times one minus sine of x 
equals zero, and careful, do not cancel out cosine because it might be zero. In fact, remember, if the product of two things is zero, at least one of them is zero. So either cosine of x equals zero or one minus sine of x equals zero. So again, cosine of x equals zero or sine of x equals one. And again, for this, draw the unit circle if you want twice, because we need to figure out when cosine is zero and we need to figure out when uh, sine is one. So let me redraw this. Good. Again, cosine, again, this is excellent review of the trig circle actually. So cosine, remember, it's the x coordinate. And the question is, when is the x coordinate zero? Well, at those two points, it's either at pi over two or at, if you want, three pi over two. Which in the first case, this tells you x equals pi over two plus multiples of two pi, so plus two pi n, or three pi over two plus multiples of two pi n. Whereas here, remember for sine, you're looking at the altitude, so the y coordinate, so you're asking yourselves, when is the y coordinate uh, one? Well, for this, the angle is just pi over two, which means that here x is pi over two uh, plus two pi n. So the point is, it's either this or this. Now, in general, you would just put all of those together. If you had pi over three, you would just say x is this, this, or you know, this pi over three. Here we do have a special case because what am I saying? I'm saying x is apples or oranges or apples. Well, notice apples is included in this already. So if you have apples or oranges or apples, it's just the same thing as saying you have apples or oranges. So in fact, this thing we can just ignore because it's already part of this solution. It's like saying if you have x equals one, two, or x equals one, in general, you would just say the solution is one, two. So in this case, our solution is then as follows. It's simply x equals pi over two plus two pi n or three pi over two plus two pi n. Great. And last but not least, I saved the best for last because they're also quadratic equations. How fun. So let's do the following two sine squared of theta minus three sine of theta plus one equals zero. Again, same technique as before, actually slightly different actually. So here what we have is this quadratic equation in terms of sine. In particular, if you let capital X be sine of theta, this becomes X squared. And this equation, so again, X is sine of theta, then what this equation becomes, it's 2x squared minus 3x plus 1 equals 0, which you can factor out using the um, quadratic formula if you want, or just directly, I believe you can say it's, let me check, so it's probably, um, I want to say 2x minus 1 times x minus 1, so 2x squared minus 2x minus x plus 1. Okay, that works. So we have 2x minus 1 times x minus 1 equals 0. And that, that tells you, well, that tells you 2x minus 1 equals 0 or x minus 1 equals 0. So x equals 1 half or x equals 1. But careful, that's not the solution. We're not solving for x. Uh, we're not, I mean, careful, this is all capital X. Um, we're solving for sine of theta. So now, 
plugging us back in, we get sine of theta equals one half or uh, sine of theta equals one. And for this, just like the previous problem, draw two trig circles. And, and try to figure out, so again, sine is just the y-coordinate, so you're just asking yourselves, when is the y-coordinate one-half? Well, one-half is at this small angle. Small angle means it's probably pi over three. Pi over three, and I think this is almost a full half circle, so the other angle should be five pi over three. So on the one hand, whoa. So on the one hand, what we get is theta equals pi over three plus multiples of two pi or five pi over three plus multiples of two pi. Whereas for the other problem, it's a little bit easier. When is the y coordinate one? Well, it's just at pi over two. So theta equals pi over two plus two pi. Great. And in the end, we put all of those together because they're all different things. So it's not like the previous example. So what do we get? Theta is pi over three plus multiples of two pi, five pi over three plus multiples of two pi or pi over two as multiples of two pi. All right, wonderful. So those are all the problems I wanted to cover. I just wanna remind you though, so sometimes you see equations that involve cosine and sine. Let's say some, you might have something cosine squared, cosine x minus sine squared of x equals something. Well, in that case, remember your trig formulas. So for instance, sine, in that case, you would write it as one minus cosine squared of x, and then get cosine of x minus one plus cosine squared of x, which in the end would give you, given your whatever equation you have, it would give you an equation purely in terms of cosine, and you would be able to solve it with the previous technique. All right, I hope you like this. If you want to see more math, please make sure to subscribe to my channel. Thank you very much.